Two lords, Nittai Gorachanda, are very merciful. They are the essence of all incarnations. The specific significance of these incarnations is that they introduced the process of chanting and dancing that is simply joyful. My dear brother, I request you, just worship Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda with conviction of faith. If you want, if one wants to be Krishna, conscious by this process. <clears throat> One has to give up his engagement in sense gratification. One simply has to chant Hare Krishna Hare 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 Without any motive. 
My dear brother, just try and examine this. Within the three worlds, there is no one like Lord Chaitanya or Lord Nityananda. Their mercy well, qualities are so great that upon hearing them, even the birds and beasts cry and stones melt. But Lochan Das regrets that I am entrapped by sense gratifications. Since I have no attraction to the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, then Yamaraj, the superintendent of death, is punishing me by not allowing me to be attracted by this movement. Mm. Lochan Das Thakur Ki Jai. Umagyan Timiranda Syagina Jana Salakayan Sakti Muritanya Matasma Sri Gurudeva Maha Sri Chaitanya Manovi Stam Stapti Tamyena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padantika Vande Ham Shigaro Shigata Padekamalam Shigarun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrachatam Sahagana Dragana Tam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahita Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Sya E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinavandu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishamanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpa Taruvischa Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we are today honoring the appearance day of the Supreme Personality of God and in His most Munisifus and most magnanimous form, Sri Nityananda Ram. Rajendra Nandanaye, Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se, Balaram Hoilo Nitai. That same Krishna Vrindavan and that same brother of his, Lord Balaram, have appeared again in this age of Kali to give extra mercy to the fallen souls in this age by giving them the opportunity to perfect their life and reach the highest form of self-realization, Prema Pumartha Mahan, love for Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. Um, Srila Prabhupada would always say, just try to understand, even if you have such great intelligence, even if you have so many achievements on the scholastic you know, table of yours, so your wall is decorated with all kinds of diplomas, still your intelligence will fall short and you'll never be, under, you'll be able to understand how merciful these two brothers are. And their lives are exhibitions of this mercy and personified. The prime example, of course, of that mercy is the, the most popular of all of their, let me say, rescues of the fallen souls, and that was Jagai and Madai. Two most heinous and most despicable, abominable personalities who had the position of being the leaders within the community. They were actually supposed to give protection to people, but they were exploiting the people, committing sinful activities, and they were so abominable that no one could even go near them. Their main activity was getting intoxicated with strong liquors and fighting amongst themselves and causing others distress. When the when the master of all of the uh, 
sinful activities who keeps a record yet Lord Yamaraj he wanted to find out just how sinful these persons were he turned to his assistant chief assistant his name was Chandra Gupta and he asked him what are the sinful activities of Jagai and Marai uh, Chandra Gupta was in over he was full of anxiety. He said, my dear master, we have been trying, we've hired 30 new scribes in order to, ca to calculate all of their sinful activities. And we are one month behind. <laughs> we cannot catch up. It's not possible. I can't give you the answer. <laughs> they are so sinful. Just like it says, Lord Chaitanya was performing a pastime every minute. Jagai and Marai were performing their pastimes every minute. <laughs> Different kind of pastime. And so, well, Lord Chaitanya, you know, he came to give mercy to all conditioned souls by spreading the glories of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. And he used... <laughs> And he encouraged uh, Lord Nityananda to go anywhere and everyone and show this mercy to the fallen conditioned souls. So he would tell Lord Nityananda, go out every day, knock on the houses of the doors of the people and beg them, whatever it takes, get them to chant the holy names of Krishna, explain that this is the treasure of their life. This is what they've been looking for. They are struggling so hard with their livelihood and they're never happy. But here's the formula for becoming happy, not only now, but eternally. And so go. So Lord Nityananda, along with Haridas Thakur, they were going to the houses of people knocking on the doors and saying, and as soon as they would open the door, Lord Nityananda would fall to his knees. He put a straw in his teeth and he would say, oh, Lord Chaitanya has come with the mercy coming from the spiritual world, the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. This is the treasure of your life. Please take advantage of it. Make your life successful and chant the holy, na the holy names. And sometimes they would say, well, Nithai, you know, we got so many things to do. We have our families, we have our agriculture, we have our animals to take care of. So many We'll chant later, <laughs> and he wouldn't accept that. He would, he would, and then he would even roll on the ground and beg them, please, I have come with the mercy, and he would do whatever he could to and convince them. And they would say, Oh, Nittai, get up, get up, get up, get up. We'll chant, we'll chant, we'll chant. <laughs> so he would go to the most lowest form of humility in order to somehow or other express there is concern because Supreme Personality of Godhead wants all of the, his parts and parcels to come back to him in loving devotional service. So he comes to this world simply to exhibit that mercy upon all of the souls. And he makes it easy, just chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. So they were going everywhere and everywhere, knocking on doors. Some people were accepting, some were people were delaying, but still they continued on. Finally, they were thinking, Nityananda was saying, what, what are those persons that are the most unlikely to accept the mercy of the Lord? Let's go to them and show them that this mercy is even available to such persons. So they inquired from the townspeople. They said, oh, these two persons, Jagai Madhavananda and Jagarananda, their names were. Ah, they, so, so we can't even go near them. They're always drunk, using bad language. They're so sinful. <laughs> it's even described in some other places within the Shastras, how, what are some of the activities they performed in committing their sinful acts? So abominable. And there was one story where one elderly man, he was blind. <clears throat> and the only way he could live was to go by begging. So he had a young daughter and he, she would escort him around to the different homes and he would beg alms in order for his livelihood. 
Well, Jagai and Madai were, Madai were there and they saw what was happening. So they attacked the old man, stole his money and raped the girl. That's how horrible these persons were. No compassion, no, no sensitivity for anyone's suffering. So, Lord Nityananda was thinking, ha, huh, here's the perfect opportunity to show the supreme mercy that has come in the form of Lord Chaitanya's. And so they went. And then from a distance, they said, hey, you two brothers, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come and he's got the holy name of the Lord. And if you chant, you'll be happy. And it's even better than what you're drinking. Something like that. That's my addition to the story anyway. <laughs> Which is true, it's not wrong. <laughs> and so, yeah, so they, then they, look, who, who's calling us? And they, oh, oh look, and they could hardly see because they were so intoxicated. And they saw, oh, yeah, look at those guys, let's get them. So they, they threw down their pots and start chasing Lord Nityananda and Hari Das Thakur, and immediately they start running away. <laughs> And so, of course, they were big and fat and drunk. They couldn't run so fast. <laughs> and Lord Nityananda is running, and he's laughing. <laughs> and uh, and Haridas Thakur, he's saying to Nitai, you know, I was beaten in 22 marketplaces, and somehow I survived. Now I'm associating with you. And I don't know what will happen. <laughs> and then Lord Nityananda would laugh some more. That's <laughs> all. So finally they went back to Lord Chaitanya in the evening, they give their Sankirtan scores, you know. <laughs> and then the next day they go out again, but they weren't finished with Jagai Mane. So again they saw them sitting there in their drunken stupor. Uh, they came and again Lord Nityananda petitioned him, please chant the holy names of the Lord. This time the mother got really angry. He picked up a broken pot that was nearby and he threw it with all his energy and it hit Lord Nityananda in the head and when it hit Lord Nityananda in the head it just the whole, practically the whole world stopped and everybody became alarmed that anyone who was watching and they all ran and tell Lord Chaitanya he came and he saw what was happening he was like Yamaraj he was like maybe Lord Shiva at the time of devastation he was so angry <laughs> He took out his chakra, but Lord Nityananda said, No, no, my dear Lord, we have not come to kill the bodies, we have come to kill the mentalities. So please give them your mercy. And then Madai, no, I'm sorry, Jagai fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya. Seeing that the Lord was actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he realized we're going to get destroyed. So he started to pray to the Lord and, and say, You know, Oh, please give us your mercy. We are sorry. And he was apologizing in so many ways. And then he would say, I didn't do it. It was my brother. He did it, you know. <laughs> you know, no honor among thieves, you know. <laughs> and so they were. And finally, you know, Lord Chaitanya became a little uh, pacified when Lord Nityananda. And then Madai, he also ran to the feet of Lord Nityananda and fell there and started really crying his heart out. He was so repentant. He was seeing both Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And now here is a chance to become free from all of his sinful activities. He was begging him and he was, he was really broken hearted that he had caused harm to Lord Nityananda. But Lord Nityananda was like a kind father who's never just like a mother, she has a little baby and the baby is just kicking sometimes the mother, but the mother doesn't care because it's her loving, loving, loving child. She simply gives the love to the child. So in the same way, Nityananda was showing so much compassion and concern for Madhe. And then finally, when Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda somehow or other blessed him, all of their sinful activities, all of their reactions, because they had become fully repentant. This is interesting to understand that when you do something wrong and you're sorry for that, most of the time you're sorry because you're afraid of what the, the reactions are going to be. <laughs> it's not really being sorry, it's just saying, oh no, I did a mistake, what's going to happen to me? But that's not repentance. Repentance really means to really 
from the heart that you cause someone else some discomfort or some some harm and therefore you're trying to you know apologize and you're sincerely really sorry for what you've done that is the actual repentance so they had come to that stage they had come to that stage and because of that all the sinful reactions they had committed immediately came out of their bodies and went into the body of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya he is Goranga is a beautiful golden form but now his form was black <laughs> all of the sinful activities went into his body and Dwayta Chari was there and he said hey Goranga you look like Krishna. Because <laughs> his whole body became blackish. And then Mahaprabhu spoke and he said, anyone who blasphemes devotees, the reactions of Jagai and Madi will all, all be, be deposited into their lives. <laughs> he was very strong about that. And Mahaprabhu also mentions that many times before that if you want to get my full mercy, this is Mahaprabhu speaking, he said you have to do two things. One, you have to chant the holy names of the Lord with a desire to please the Lord, and you have to stop offending devotees. You have to, in other words, you have to don't see the faults of others. Adosha Darshi, Darshi means faults, Adosha means, Dosha means see, but one who doesn't see the faults of others. He said, then, and then the full mercy of Mahaprabhu comes. And what is that full mercy? He, he allows one to engage in pure devotional service to Radha and Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. That's his mercy. But in order to get the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you have to get the mercy of Lord Nityananda. He is the representative. Bodo Sukher Kabugai. Bode Sukher Kabugai. Surabi Kundeche Namera Kureche. Koda Nitai, Koda Nitai. Lord Nityananda, he wants to glorify Lord Chaitanya, and he wants to spread that glory as far as he can. So he goes in different places and he sets up his little shop. He's a merchant, he's a Vaishya, <laughs> he wants to make some, some profit. <laughs> and so he sets up his shop and uh, he said, I am selling, I have one product, it is the best of all products, please come. Make sure you have enough, you know, currency because it's not free. <laughs> and uh, uh, what is that uh, current? What is that merchandise he's selling? He's selling the holy name, but he's giving it into the portion of how much faith you have. So the currency for chanting the holy name is the faith you have in the holy name. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur says there's nothing in the fourteen laurels like the holy name of Lord Krishna. If we have faith that the holy name is everything, and by chanting the holy name we can purify our consciousness and awaken our love for Krishna, then that, that pleases Lord Nityananda. When that pleases Lord Nityananda, he will give the mercy of the holy name to anyone and anyone. And when one gets the mercy of Lord Nityananda, then one can chant the holy names with devotion. And that attracts Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so when we uh, when you get the mercy of Lord Nityananda, you get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And his mercy is easily available. He is so kind. As we saw from that pastime of Jagai and Mother, they were so sinful. Uh, we can't re recount how sinful they were. And actually, after becoming purified, uh, they were just seen as just as just as another Vaishnava who had joined the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He welcomed them into this, and he told his devotees, you should not see them the way they were. This is very important. Somebody commits a sinful activity in the past. Apichet suraracharo bhajate nanyabhak nanyabhak sadhuva samanta vyak vyavyaha ho hisa that even if one commits the most abominable activity, if they repent for that activity, if they give up their activity, follow the instructions of the Lord, they can engage in devotional service, they're saintly. And it says that anyone who sees that person in that way is also considered 
saintly. <laughs> it's a very important part because sometimes when someone makes a mistake or someone commits an offense, that's all we remember. We label that person like that. We don't see that they're chanting the holy name, they're trying to rectify their mistakes, they're trying to get back to Krishna. That's how Krishna sees it. He sees it as, you know, all right, being in the material world, things happen. Sometimes you make a mistake, sometimes you commit a sinful activity. So there's a way to rectify that. But then once that is done, get back into devotional service and fix yourself, fix your mind on, devo on serving the Lord and his devotees. And then that person, it, it's like that person never did anything wrong. That's how Krishna sees it. That's how Krishna sees it. And so, but Madai, you know, Madai, after he, he, you know, his heart was still, you know, unhappy because what he had done to Lord Nityananda. So he kept coming to Lord Nityananda and crying every day and just explaining how sorry he was. Lord Nityananda decided to give him some service. She said, you go and you go to the Ganga and you, he showed him a place to go and you build a gat near the Ganga and that the way people, pilgrims who come for taking bath in Mother Ganga, they can come first into your ghat and then they will come into Mother Ganga. So he took that service on his head and he started to, with, a, with his own shovel in his hands, he was digging a ghat. And then people would come by and say, oh, there's that mud eye, what a rascal. And they would take a rock and throw it at him. And then it would hit him and he'd pick up the rock and he'd go back to the person here and he'd say, Please throw it again. <laughs> That's how repentant he was. He was so, feeling so horrible that he had caused Lord Nityananda's suffering. Of course, for Lord Nityananda, it wasn't suffering. It's like, it's like the, when a child commits some, kicks the mother or does something when the mother's trying to treat the, mother, the child. It's the same way. He doesn't see it as suffering. He sees it as his, his duty to try to raise these fallen souls back to their position of being Krishna Das. And what is the mercy? Hare Krishna. Enechi asadi maya nasi baralagi harinam maha mantra lao to me magi. Uh, Asaudi, that is the medicine in this age, to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and to associate with devotees. Uh, Mahaprabhu, after he took sannyas, he, too, he decided to take up his residence in Jagannath Puri on the request of his good mother, Sachi Mata. He was going to go to Vrindavan, but Sachi Mata said, no, no, please, we don't, if we go to Vrindavan, we will never see you again, but please go to Puri. Puri is like in Navadweep, they're like two rooms in the same house. So please take up your residence there. At least we could come and see you. And so every year during the Ratha Yatra ceremony, the devotees would make pilgrimage from Navadweep to come and see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. So he told Lord Nityananda, you preach. I'm preaching here and I'm, I'm trying to raise the conditioned souls here in Jagannath Puri. You do the same. In Navadweep. But one year, Lord Nityananda really wanted to see Lord Chaitanya, so he decided to come with the other devotees. And Mahaprabhu was happy to see him, and they spent time together sharing and experiencing their happiness together. And there was a little private conversation, and Mahaprabhu, later on, the, the conversation was revealed, and Mahaprabhu said, You know, I know you want to be with me, and I also want to be with you, but we have a duty to perform. So here, I'm, I'm, I'm helping here. You go to Navadweep and you take all of your devotees and go back there and you preach the glories of the chanting the holy names there. So Nityananda, he took that instruction on his head and he gathered all his gopals because he is, he's a cowherd boy. And so they decided to go to Navadweep. 
And so they, they began kirtan and they were chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. And they were chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and dancing and chanting and dancing. And so, and they didn't even know where they were going. They got lost. Where were we? I don't know. Do you know where we're going? Doesn't matter. Because <laughs> they were chanting. But someone said, no, no, we have to find which way we're going. Let's ask someone. So they asked the villagers, where are we going? How to get to Navadvi? Oh, hi, hi! It's six miles that way. You find the road, go. And... Okay, so they went that way. So they got, they found the road, and then they were chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and chanting and more dancing. And so again, they're lost. Where are we? We don't know. Let's ask. Okay. Hi, hi, 20 miles that way. Go find the Ganga. Take the Ganga. It'll lead you to Navadweep. Okay. So they found the Ganga when they were chanting, 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 and then. <laughs> Same thing, nothing else. Yeah. So finally they arrived in Navadweep and they came to the house of Raghava Pandit. And Raghava Pandit came out and greeted all of the devotees, and he had a garland, beautiful garland. He put it on the, the, uh, the body of Lord Nityananda. And Lord Nityananda looked and said, I want Kadamba flowers. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, when you get a garland, you should be, you know, when Nit well, this is Nityananda anyway. You never know what he's going to do next. <laughs> so I want Kadamba flowers. So Raghava Pandit said, there's no Kadamba flowers this time of the year. This is, this is not the season. Lord Nityananda said, go in your backyard and just see what you can find. <laughs> so he went in his backyard. And on the lemon tree, there were Kadamba flowers. <laughs> <laughs> he was shocked. And he picked the flowers, made a nice garland for Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda was very pleased. <clears throat> then everyone started to smell the beautiful aroma of Damanaka flowers. Now, Damanaka flowers only grow in the area of Jagannath Puri. And Lord Chaitanya always wears a Damanaka garland. So everyone's thinking, is Lord Chaitanya here? But he was, but no one could see him. He was in his unmanifested form because it says wherever <clears throat> Lord Nityananda is chanting and dancing and having kirtan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is personally present. So then they began kirtan again. And they, he gathered all his devotees again and the kirtan started again. And the kirtan went on and on and on and on and on. Vrindavan Das Thakur says that kirtan went on for three months without stopping. It's mentioned in Chaitanya Bhagavat. Three full months, they continued to chant and dance. Some, the kirtan was so ecstatic and mad that the devotees were walking up the side of the tree onto the branches and dancing all the way up on the ends of the branches where the little twigs were and dancing out there. And the branches were not breaking. <laughs> and so one, some of the devotees were, were just going mad one day. I am Angada! Boom! He'd dive off the, it's like the monkey soldier Angada. And they would just be demonstrating all kinds of ecstasy. And then they would be picking up trees and dancing with the trees, small trees, not big trees. <laughs> and then the villagers were, were started to pick up on the kirtan. People came from the village and they joined the kirtan. Some of the kids who were in the villages, they also started to chant and dance, and it says that they chanted and danced for one full month, also picking up little trees. <laughs> this is Lord Nityananda's kirtan, and it's not possible to describe it, but this is mentioned. Now finally, Lord Nityananda, he, he arrived in Navadweep. After he had just arrived, one great personality, actually it was a, a sadhu, that Lord Nityananda had met when he was when he had uh, visited one holy place, 
and he benedicted this sadhu, and the sadhu wanted to somehow remunerate Lord Nityananda, so he gathered a large amount of finances and he purchased all of this fine jewelry and he had it was earrings and armlets and leg and, leg, and nipura uh, um, helmets and beautiful jewelry and he offered it to Lord Nityananda as a gift. And Lord Nityananda accepted the gift and he decorated himself so nicely with all of this jewelry. And then he was chanting with his devotees in Navadvi. But then there was one dacoit, and he was the leader of many dacoits, and he had a gang of followers, and he was looking, he's saying, hmm. He calls his associates over and he said, look at this, look at this person here. We can, we can retire after this job. <laughs> Everything we were looking for is one in one place because it was you know, gold and silver and beautiful jewelry. And so uh, we will attack and we will steal his, his, his jewelry. So then he made a plan. So Lord Nityananda in the evening, after performing kirtan all day, would stay at the house of Jagadish Pandit. And he would take prasadam there, and then they would they would talk about Krishna and have kirtan. And so, the uh, dacoits, there were about five of them, along with the leader of the now the leader of the dacoi, he was a brahmana, but he had fallen from his brahminical status and became a, a thief. <laughs> and so, they decided to attack that night. So they, they started to go to the house of Jagadish Pandit. But then they were thinking, we have to wait till it gets a little darker because it's too, too more easily seen. So they waited. And as they were waiting, it was getting darker and darker and darker and darker. And then they all fell asleep. <laughs> All the Dakites fell asleep, and they woke up to the sound of the rooster <laughs> the next morning. And they were looking out. What happened? You fell asleep. No, it was your fault. You fell asleep. No, no. And they start criticizing each other for falling asleep. And then the leader of the Dakite, he said, no, no. It is actually, we haven't worshipped Chandi, Chandi Devi. Because we haven't worshipped her, she didn't give us her mercy. So we should go back and worship Chandi Devi. So they decided, all right, so they worshipped Chandi Devi, and then they were all ready, so they came the next night. So again, they approached the house in the evening time. But then they saw around the house there were these huge, <coughs> gigantic personalities, like sentients or soldiers and they had big swords and they were circumambulating Jagadish's house where Lord Nityananda was staying and then they were looking and they, they were thinking what is this we can't do anything with these guys here <laughs> so the leader of the Dakoi said ah oh, maybe the king has come with his retinue and he's there so let's let's go so they left and so they waited for about 10 days, and, and then they came back. And then this time they were really ready. They were more anxious than ever. They, were, they had waited too long. And so they came to the house in the evening, and Lord Nityananda was there with his associates, and the soldiers were gone. <clears throat> and so they decided to attack. They each mentions that each dacoit was armed with five different weapons. And then, as they were ready to attack, it started to get dark again. And it got darker, darker, dar and it got really dark. <laughs> so dark, they couldn't see their hand in front of their face. And all of a sudden, they didn't know where they were. They couldn't see anything. So they were trying to get out, go somewhere. So one would walk, and he walked right into a, a bush full of thorns, and he gets stuck. The other one walked into a canal and fell and broke his leg. Another one fell into a ditch. It was being eaten by mosquitoes and leeches. And they were all, ah! And they were 
this, and then all of a sudden, Indra decided to top it off with a little extra mercy. And so he, he sent these torrents of rain, freezing rain. And they were freezing, and then the rain turned into these hailstones. And they were being pelted by these giant hailstones. And they were, ah, stuck on Thorbos, being bitten by these mosquitoes, pouring rain. <laughs> it's like. And then while that was happening, the leader of the Dacoits, he started to th think, this Nityananda must be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We have committed a great offense. So his heart became a little bit repentant. And as soon as he started to think like that, then Indra started to let up on the rain. And then the thing, everything stopped and became gradually, soon the morning came. Of course, the, the Dakites were all kind of broken, beaten down. But the next night, the uh, leader of the Dakites, he went to the house where Lord Nityananda, and he let his hair down, he came in, he came to the door, and they let him in. And when, then, when the devotees saw who it was, they all became a little apprehensive. Oh, we can't trust him. But Lord Nityananda could understand everything. So he came and he fell at the feet of Lord Nityananda and he was crying. He was really sorry, he repented. I had committed a great offense. I wanted to rob you, I wanted to do harm. And, but now I understand you are the supreme merciful personality of Godhead. Please give me your mercy. He said, and then Lord Nityananda was very kind to him, started to rub his head. But then the Dakoid said, actually, you know, my offense is so great, I don't even deserve to live, so I'm going to give up my life. And Lord Nityananda said, no, don't do that. I have some service for you. <laughs> and he said, because you, are, you have so much influence in the community of the Dakoids, I want you to go to all of the Dakites and make them devotees. <laughs> and, you know, he had his own way of doing it, you know. You either become a devotee or, you know, you don't become anything else. <laughs> In other words, I'll finish you off. <laughs> so, it's, you know, we need somebody like, you know, Tirumungai, you know. <laughs> that kind of <laughs> spread Krishna. Do we need that? Uh, maybe not, but we need... <laughs> And it would help, you know. There was one time when the devotees were preaching in America. This was when Srila Prabhupada was here. And they, they really needed money, because in the old days, we didn't have hardly any money in those days. And whatever money we could get, we would use for, you know, building temples or distributing books. And, and things were difficult. So they, they found one drug dealer. He was dealing drugs. So he became friendly and favorable to the devotees. And so he started to deal drugs and give the money to the devotees. And then this was going on for a long time. And he was making good money. You know, drug dealers make a lot of money in the United States. I can tell you that for sure. <laughs> and so uh, the devotees were really pleased. You know, he, he actually became favorable and was giving money. So they, they brought him to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> and they wanted to, you know, introduce him to Prabhupada. And he's, uh, he's helping our movement a lot. <laughs> so they came in, he came in, and Prabhupada looked at him and said, what is your occupation? He said, uh, I sell drugs. Prabhupada said, oh. Really, I used to sell drugs also. <laughs> Prabhupada was a pharmacist. <laughs> so, you know, this was the old days of Krishna consciousness. Lord Nityananda's mercy comes in different forms. <laughs> and so, this particular pastime really illustrates how kind and merciful Lord Nityananda was. He simply... <clears throat> doesn't see the faults in anyone. If he can give them the mercy, he gives them mercy. And so if we take shelter of Lord Nityananda and chant the holy names of the Lord and pray to Lord Nityananda, please engage me in your service. And Lord Nityananda is very kind. 
When Lord Nityananda was a young boy, he was in, we all know the story how he grew up in Ekar Chakra. And at the age of 12 years old, he left Ekar Chakra with one sannyasi who had come. And he traveled with that sannyasi for 20 years. He left because he understood that Lord Chaitanya has now taken birth. And therefore he wanted to make his way eventually to see Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Chaitanya, Lord, Lord Nityananda was 12 years older than Lord Chaitanya. And Lord Nityananda, in the same spirit as Lord Balaram, traveled for, for many years to many holy places, actually 20 years. And after 20 years of traveling, he came to the area of Navadvip. And he secretly went into Navadvip without anyone seeing him, and he went to the house of Nandanacharya. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could understand that his brother had come and he was so happy. And he told all of the devotees, a very great personality has arrived and soon we will meet him. And then uh, the devotees were thinking, who is this great personality? So they went out looking everywhere to see if they could find him, but they couldn't find him anywhere. And then they would come back after searching for nine hours, they couldn't find him. And then Lord Chaitanya says, you can't find him. It's not possible. <laughs> he will, when he wants to be found, he will be found. But come with me, I know where he is. <laughs> so he took all his gopo, his associates, and they went to the house of Nandanacharya. And that's a beautiful story how Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya had met for the first time, exchanging beautiful, loving relationships. And then Lord, Nitya, Lord Chaitanya said, tomorrow, Lord Nittai, tomorrow is the, is the celebration for honoring Vyasadeva. So come, we will have a celebration. Where should we have the house celebration? Srivast, that course, we can have it at my house. Lord Nitya Chaitanya said, oh good, let us all gather at Lord, uh, at uh, Srivast, that course, house. So they went the next day. <clears throat> and... Uh, and so the ceremony began. <clears throat> and uh, so Lord Sri Vastakor, he had the book for conducting the ceremony, and the ceremony was going on. And at one point it was time to give the garland to uh, uh, Vyasadev. They had a, a morti of Vyasadev there. And... Uh, Srivast Thakur, he goes over to Lord Nityananda and he says, here, take the garland and put it on Vyasadeva. So Lord Nityananda takes the garland, he stands there, doesn't move. Anitai put the garland on Vyasadeva. He's not moving. He's just going like this. Nitai put the garland on Vyasadeva. Finally, Lord Chaitanya comes over and says, Nitai, put the garland on Vyasadeva. And Lord Nityananda put the garland on Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and he is the personification of Vyasadeva. And so um, this is to show his love for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He would do the most unusual things. He would, um, he would go, he would travel throughout and he would see young girls and he would say, would you marry me? <laughs> and they would run away and go to their father and say, this man, he's asking me to marry him. <laughs> and then he would run away. <laughs> he never could understand what he would do. And sometimes he'd go and someone would be milking a cow, he'd take some milk and then he'd leave. <laughs> or then he would just go with, the, he would be with the devotees and he would be by the river and he'd jump into the river, he'd see a crocodile. And he'd chase after the crocodile and swim after the crocodile. And the devotees would be, oh my God, what's going to happen to Nittai? He's running after this crocodile. And they would say, Nittai, come back, come back, come back, come back. He wouldn't hear anything. And Lord Chaitanya would say, Nittai, come back. And he would just turn around and come back. <laughs> he would always obey Lord Chaitanya's command. 
So these are some of the beautiful, I mean, so many pastimes, especially when in, in uh, there's a nice story that's mentioned where Nittai was by himself. He was about to enter a particular forest and uh, he was standing and he was about to go into the forest, but then the people in the area saw that this personality was going into the forest and they said, hey, don't go into that forest. There's a deadly snake, big cobra. He's gigantic. Jai Shri Shri Radha Gopinath Ki Jai Shri Shri Gornitai Ki Gopalnati Ki Jai and they said, there's a giant snake in that forest and anybody goes him, they, that snake devours that person. But Nityananda didn't listen, so he went into the forest. And then when he went into the forest, the snake came out. And he showed his hood, so he looked in at Lord Nityananda. And Lord Nityananda started to speak to the snake. Hey, you rascal. That's how it's described. <laughs> What are you doing? Why are you causing so much harm and distress to people? Stop it! <laughs> he said, I can't. The snake started to become a little humble. This is my occupation. I need something to eat. I have no place to go. And then the story of that snake was later illustrated. Well, who was that actual snake? It was a very special personality who, had be who was actually a snake. So the story goes that when the Pandavas were in exile. They had. They needed to spend some time in the house of a, a particular householder. So they came near to Ekar Chakra, and they were staying in this one little area near Ekar Chakra. But they didn't have proper shelter. So Vyasadeva, as it's described, appeared to the Pandavas and said, "You should go into Ekar Chakra, and there's one very nice Brahmin. His name is Vedasara." You go to his house, he will give you shelter. So the five Pandavas, along with Mother Kunti, they went. They found the house of Vedasara and came. He, of course, he welcomed them in, but he was so poor, he could, he could hardly support him and his own family. He had, one, he had a son and a daughter, along with a wife, and it was hard for him. But still, because he was very hospitable, he welcomed the, the five Pandavas and Mother Kunti in. And so, they were there. Now, there was a curse upon the village. One particular demon, his name was Bakasura. This is not the same Bakasura that was in Krishna Leela, it was a different one. And he would go through the village and attack people and devour them. And so, the villagers were very much in anxiety about this demon. They couldn't do anything to stop him. So they decided to make a plan amongst themselves. We have to do something. There's no peace. He's always attacking. You don't know who he's going to attack next. So let's make a deal with this demon. And the deal was that they would offer one person every, was it every day? Or was it every, every month? Huh? Every week, yeah, once a week, one person would have to go from one household and sacrifice their life, and they would bring a big cartload of food to the demon. He was living on the mountain in that same area. And so, and in, in the morning time, when it was time for that to happen, <clears throat> there was the announcement, and the village drummer, he would get on the drum, and he would beat his drum, and then he would stop and say, the house of today is the house of Vedasara. He has to sacrifice someone from his family. <clears throat> so when the news got back to Vedasara, he was, <laughs> of course, in distress. But what could he do? That was the deal. So he decided, I have to go. But his son said, no, no. His son was about 14. I will go. No, no, you don't go. I will go. But then Kunti was understanding what was going on. There's some calamity in the house. So she inquired and they explained everything. Kunti said, I have five sons. I'll give you, I'll give one of my son. And so she said, Bhima will go. <laughs> so, okay. So <clears throat> Bhima went and Bhima, of course, she knew that this demon can't do anything for Bhima. 
So they gathered a big cartload of food and Bhima was hauling the food and Bhima was thinking, you know, I stayed in this Brahmin's house for so long and I'm not getting anything to eat. <laughs> Because his name is Vikradar, it's another name for Bhima, it means the one who has a wolf belly like a wolf. He can eat mounds of prashadam. <clears throat> and so he, was, while he was pulling the cart towards the, where the demon was, he was eating everything at the same time. <laughs> and he was enjoying all of the prashadam and still walking towards the demon. Finally he gets close to the demon and the demon is saying, what is this? And he's eating everything. So he came and he attacked, but then Bhima wasn't finished yet. So with one hand he kept the demon away, and the other hand he was finishing prashad, you know. You know, when you're taking prashad, you don't like to be disturbed. Somebody comes along and say, Hare Krishna, yeah, thank you very much, yeah. I got business here. <laughs> Priority. <laughs> So, yeah, but then when Bhima finished, and then he just finished off the demon, it's described he just palmated him into a ball and finished him off. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> when Arjun heard that Bhima had gone to this demon, he got information from Kunti, he was concerned to help his brother, so he decided to shoot an arrow, which was a snake arrow, to tie up the demon. He was going to assist, but he didn't know the demons was already killed. So he fired that arrow, and when the arrow came out, there was no target for the arrow. And so it was a snake arrow, and so a snake appeared, and now this snake didn't have any target, had no... And so when Arjuna realized that the snake was there, and, it had, and there was no need for the snake, he went to the snake and the snake said, you have created me, now you have to give me a place to stay. I have no place to eat, I have no shelter. And so Arjuna made some arrangements for the snake to live in this one particular hole. And later on, when Lord Nityananda came, that snake was still there living in that hole. And he took his earring off. You see Lord Nityananda has only one earring. He took one earring off and he put it over that hole. And that earring was just a small earring, but in due course of time it expanded into a gigantic cover for that hole in that snake stated. That was the same snake that Lord Nityananda had met in the forest. <clears throat> and to this day, even today, there, that place where that snake is, they worship that because it's actually they're worshiping Lord Nityananda's earring. And it's actually the size of a huge rock now. So. So Ekar Chakra was a place of many pastimes for Lord, Lord Nityananda. He grew up there as a young boy. So there's so many wonderful stories of the life of Lord Nityananda. One time Lord Chaitanya said, Lord Nityananda, hey, you know, give me your copans. So Lord Nityananda took, off his, took his copans up and Lord, Lord Chaitanya he was with a group of Brahmins and they were having kirtan. So he tore the kopans into different smaller pieces and he started giving and he said, put these kopans on your head. <laughs> and so they, they tied their kopans to their hair in different ways and so, and they continued to have kirtan. But what happened was, the, by having that, that kopan of Lord Nityananda on their head, they fell into ecstasy and they couldn't even chant anymore. <laughs> they just collapsed and they were just like, ah, oh, it's like this. They reached higher states of ecstasy just by wearing the copans of Lord Nityananda. Lord Chaitanya understood who is this Nityananda. <laughs> this is a nice story. One time Lord, Lord Nityananda was in the house of Malini, which was the house of Srivas Thakur, and Malini was doing puja to the deity. And while she was doing the puja, she was offering the article, and one crow flow, flew into the window. And the crow picked up the pot where you pour the water from the conch after you offer it, and he flew away with that pot. Now Malani is in distress because that pot was one of the favorite pots of her husband, you know, Srivas Thakur, and he, she's thinking, oh, he's gonna be so upset, the pot, pot is gone. So she's in distress, and Nityananda, he comes, Mataji, what is, this crow came in, stole, 
it's my husband's pot and, and he's gone, he's going to be very angry. Uh, so Nityananda said, don't worry. Hey, crow, come back. <laughs> and the crow flew back in the window with the pot and put it down and left. <laughs> and then Malandini said, actually for you that's not very great. <laughs> We actually know who you are. <laughs> so this is one of the... I remember when I was in Eka Chakra, I was giving a tour with some some pilgrims who were there, and we, we stopped, and I told that story. And as soon as I started to tell the story, a crow came by and sat near us. And I guess he wanted to hear this about his relatives. <laughs> that was nice. You know, I was thinking... And a devotee said, hey, look, there's a crow here. Said, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So these are some of the sweet pastimes. There are so many, you know, pastimes of Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya. And, of course, there are pastimes of kirtan together. Uh, uh, and uh, performing kirtan, and going from place to place, just giving the mercy... So if we take shelter of Lord Nityananda, Bodo Sukhe Arkabhogai, Bodo Sukhe Arkabhang, Surabhi Kundecha, he's very merciful. And one cannot really approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dhamma, without the mercy of Lord Nityananda. But he's very kind, he's very merciful. And his mercy is not just some idea. If, if one just chants the name of Lord, Nitya, Lord Chaitanya, they become very dear to Lord Nityananda. Simply by chanting Goranga. 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 And if you chant Nityananda's name, you get the mercy of Lord Goranga, Nityananda, Nityananda, Nityananda. So merciful. It's not possible to describe their mercy. They are so easily approachable. And the more sinful you are, the better position you are to get the mercy. <laughs> So don't try for that, <laughs> but that's how, you know, that's how they are. The, the more fallen, the more the mercy. And even Prabhupada was saying, Jagai and Madai, it's explained in that particular pastime by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He says that this pastime of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda showing most mercy to Jagai and Madai is not simply a historical incident. It is not simply a pastime from the scriptures. It is a fact that this activity is going on today. And Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda are still serving, saving the Jagais and Madais. And as Kali Yuga comes on, <laughs> Kali Yuga is... Just like I, I preach in one, one jail. So we preach in jails and we sometimes we come in contact with somebody. So I met this one devotee through letters. And he, he's not a devotee. He somehow or other got a book in jail and became a little bit interested. So I found out a little bit about his background. He was a gang member and he killed eight people in gang fights. And so now he's in jail. And he, so he's quite a macho guy. <laughs> He's got, you know, big muscles and he's very strong and very, you know, but now he's reading, you know, uh, what was it? He got a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita somehow. <laughs> and he's reading Chaitanya Charitamrita. And now he's writing me and he's explaining how he's really becoming attracted to chanting and how he's learning more about our movement. So this is going on for a couple of years, and then finally he, he actually received initiation from one of my god brothers, and, uh, and he got a new name. And his name was, he got the name Balavan Nittai. <laughs> Balavan Nittai. 
And so now he's, in, he's still in jail. And one day, because in the jail they, they, let this, they let the inmates go out into the area where they all exercise, they run and they do calisthenics and they you know, get out of the cells for a little while. So he was there. And there's many other inmates there together. So one inmate came up to him and said, are you, and he, named, he asked his name, he mentions his name. He said, yeah, that's me. He said, you killed my best friend. So he attacked this devotee, this inmate devotee. And what he did when he was attacked, I mean, he's so strong, he, he could have finished this person off in a moment, but he didn't do it. He just grabbed him, held him down, and the guards came and they took him away. And he wrote me a letter. He said, you know, I surprised myself. <laughs> Usually if anybody would attack me like that, I, you know, just, that would have been the last thing that person did. <laughs> but he, he said, since I've been reading Chaitanya Charitamrita and chanting Hare Krishna, something happened. <laughs> He's changed, and he could, he's actually, you know, he's, he's seeing, he's now different. He's actually a gentle person. And so this is the mercy of Lord Nityananda. It goes, and you can, anywhere and everywhere, they take that mercy. And the Jagais and the Malais are actually becoming Vaishnavas. This is, this is only because of Gornitai. So we take shelter of Lord Nityananda, pray for their mercy and chant the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Sri Nityananda Rama Ki Jai, Sri Nityananda Mahamahotsava Tiro Avir Bhav Ki Go to Priman and Dave. Oh. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you. Lord Nityananda is very kind. <laughs> Any questions or do we have time for questions? Should we have Kirtan or is it hmm? Gora Gorarsi? Hmm? Eight thirty we have Gorarti, so Gorarti. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs>